Welcome to part 2 of the complex number roots using Microsoft Excel. In this video clip I am going to provide you a demonstration of how to actually use the solver tool which can be found under data tab in Microsoft Excel. If you don't have the solver tool activated you won't see this and unfortunately you will have to do that first before you can verify or reproduce my results on your end. So you may want to look elsewhere on YouTube to find how to activate this solver tool and how to make settings or how to adjust settings for precision for calculations. In the previous part we had started with this polynomial x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1 and we were trying to find the roots to that or setting up the equations. In doing so we had chosen or I had chosen x equals a plus ib as a guess format and as a result of which after separating real and imaginary parts the real part le led to this equation imaginary part leads to this equation these are labeled as objective and constraint and it's not unique choice in that i could have labeled the second one as objective and first one as constraint but microsoft excel solver tool only allows one cell to be chosen as objective and therefore i must select one equation as an objective and if there are more than one equations here the remainder have to be taken as constraint. So if you are not familiar with objective and constraints of optimization not to worry just know that choose one as objective second as constraint. It doesn't matter which one is objective and which one is constraint insofar all equations are accounted for and that they are being solved simultaneously. The exact answer as we knew earlier for this equation was x equals 1 i or negative y were the roots of this equation and that correspondingly with this guess it would imply that if x is 1 a is 1 b is 0 if x is i a is 0 b is 1 if x is negative y then a is 0 and b is negative 1 with that said we have to have a cell for gazing a and so this is just a number as you can see when I activate the cell all that comes up is 3 I could say let's say equals 3 and it's the same thing likewise I could say equals 4 and again I just chose this randomly but objective the number that shows up here is due to this equation so k3 k3 here is a as you can see likewise k3 square would be a square k5 square would be b square 3 k3 k5 square would be 3 a b square of course there is a negative sign preceding it as illustrated here k cubed is a cubed minus 1 is such so that's my this part here note that I have to the solver has to actually come up with choice of a and b such that it equals 0 and the constraint also equals 0 but that's not something I have to worry about at the outset I just have to guess a value likewise for constraint I have written the constraint equation in that b is my cell k5 so first comes k5 then 2ab is 2 times k sub k3 k5 and so forth so I would recommend that you pause and try to do this on your own as well and, and see if it works for you and if not then uh, post some comments and I'd be happy to help you to succeed with that said now that I have all these uh, cells populated I would activate the solver tool and because I've done this previously it appears automatically but on your end it may not so you may have to formally choose this cell and so it will be dollar k dollar seven which means you have chosen the objective cell here so I'm just going to close it for now and just take this and do it again so now you can see that automatically it has been chosen note that by default it may be set to max or min you must choose for the value of zero because we are solving this to make it zero here and there now variable cells so it says change variable cells meaning you have to keep on guessing you meaning the solver would have to keep on guessing a and b once the initial guess has been provided and therefore dollar k dollar 3 corresponds to the cell where a has been guessed dollar k dollar 5 is the cell where b has been guessed then you add the constraint in case if you are not sure all you do is if you want to add constraint you click on add and then it says cell reference so I could just pick the cell reference set this equals for example I could choose this and then oops choose this and I can put value 0 and then add and that's how I got this constraint to manifest in this box 
but I must have constraint equal to zero as I want this to be solved simultaneously. Now here it says make un unconstrained variables non-negative. So initially I'm going to keep it non-negative to solve for x is 1 and i. Later when I want my negative i uh, root to be found I'll deactivate this which means it allows me to have negative numbers as the answer. Select solving method I would say go with uh, GRG nonlinear which is generalized reduced gradient it's a very powerful tool for all our purposes we just need to we just need to click solve and here's my solution so it gave me the solution for x equals i where a is 0 b is 0 0.99 or practically 1 and these two are sufficiently small numbers so practically we have computationally if you will uh, determine the roots root meaning x is i which is a is 0 b is 1 and you can try other cases. Let's say I want a is 1, b is 0. In which case, I can force this to be 0 and hope for the convergence to, let's say, a is 1. And let's try that. And there we have it. This is practically 1 with case to, for b to be 0. So it's a plus 0i or 1 plus 0i corresponding to x is 1. Now, I will try to find the imaginary root for negative i so I'm going to deactivate this or uncheck this which means that I can be or I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to or the software is now or tool is now allowed to provide negative numbers as the answers uh, as one of the answers so let's say solve and say okay so now I've got based on the previous earlier arrived root it has been refined now I'll, what I will do is I will change this to 0 and make this negative 3 and now let's try to solve it and there we have practically b is negative 1 which corresponds to x is negative y a is 0 practically when they practically meaning for all computational purposes it's sufficiently small number uh, that you can say that we have approximately or computationally arrived at the root now if you want a better answer, yet smaller number than that, you would have to adjust the precision or how many decimal places are carried in the computations and all that you can do with uh, Excel settings going in the options uh, for the file, which would make a too longer video clip, so I'm going to stop here. So know that you can do this for any degree polynomial, it, it's just that higher the degree, more the algebra, more the number of roots, the more the number of guesses you have to provide individually to converge at the root. So then becomes a bit of a guesswork, but it's much better than not being able to find complex roots using MS Excel. So now you should be able to compute any uh, roots, real or complex, for any algebraic equation, polynomial or transcendental, insofar you can separate the real and imaginary parts easily. With that said, I'll stop here. Thank you for your time.